in the 90s, rap beef used to be fun because rap beef was fun because it was it was kind of like joking around and and it it wasn't that personal. You know what I mean? It was personal, but it never was that personal. Not personal to the point where if I see you, I'm going to kill you. Like, when people thought, like, Easy e and Dr. Dre was rap beefing, it was serious, and, uh, you know, if they see each other, they shoot each other on the side. It wasn't like that. They, they, they both stayed in the hills of L.A., three three houses down. So it was never that serious to the point where you believe that, these people were shooting at each other when they seen each other or, you know, beef like that. Now, you know, this rap beef is, is, is too serious. You know I mean? You got people's favorite rappers dying, man. You know, like, it's cool to hear rap beef. It's cool to hear it on a mic. It's cool to hear it, like, on some rap perspective. But when you have your favorite rappers dying, it's not, it's not fun, man. You know, it's not, that's why I haven't really been getting into the politics of the rap beef. You know, uh, uh, people want me to, you know, even though I'm a Mozzie fan, I, I get tired of the rap beef. I get tired of this records going back and forth and me having to talk about this, this song and that, this song. You know what I mean? It, it, it comes to a point where it's like, what what's the point of even... What's the point of even keep making songs? You just don't keep making songs. What, what point are you really even proving? So I'm not gonna get into I'm not gonna get into this song that Lavish D made against Mozzie. I mean, at the end of the day, like if you feel like you're the king of the sack, just do a versus. You guys got seven years worth of material. You do your seven years of material against his seven years of material. Whoever wins is the king of sack. How about you do it like that? Instead of all this dissing back and forth and waiting for replies and, and you know, then eventually somebody's going to get mad because you're getting deeper and deeper, you know. Y'all start deep digging up files and stuff. Next thing you know, you're going to be talking about the people who, who he dated and, what you know, what clothes he was wearing that day. Or, you know, I seen your friend at the store. He didn't say hello. I pulled a gun on like who cares, man? It's like this is our waste of time, G. They are a waste of time. Like, if you look at all the songs that you made, for all the people that diss, look at all the songs that you made. There were hits compared to your diss songs. All the songs that you made, personal songs or songs, made more views than your diss songs. People like a diss for it, like, in this internet world, you know, you got, you know, a lot of punks pumping people up on the internet. That's why everything's fucked up, because the internet, like, the internet really is the devil. It's pumping people up, it's making, you know, you may not feel too cool about a situation, but somebody get on the internet you don't know, with a fake name, say some shit to, to, to pump you up that day. I was a victim to that, you know what I mean, till I understood it. But I was a victim to it at first. People used to get on my YouTube all day. Pump me up. Fuck you, nigga. I'm pumped up. Early in the morning, taking a shot, nigga. Smoke like two, three blunts. I'm on now. Because nigga didn't pump me up. But then I found out that you can't let people control you. You can't let people control your day, control your life, control you, period, on how you feel. Once I, once I figured that out. You know, I really figured that out by just getting drunk one day and replying back to hella people. But once you figure that out, you'll figure out that, you know, like this, this, this Internet can lead you into deeper, deeper, deeper situations. When you're trying to better your life and change your life, you can get out of it by not falling into the Internet hype. So I would love all rappers to get do a versus just like Jeezy and Gucci did. I want them all to do a, a versus, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's good. You know, it's good for, um, it's good for, like, it's good just to get your energy out, get all, get everything you have out and, and say it right there and there in front of the person's face and, and leave it there and end it all there. Instead of going back and forth and you killed my friend and you want to put on a mic and you get fans. 
And then fans be disappointed and discouraged when you die. What's the point of rapping? You might as well just be a gangster. If you want to be a gangster and shoot at niggas, be a gangster and shoot at niggas. Don't be a, get, try to be a gangster and shoot at niggas. Be a rapper at the same time. It's not going to work. I said this before. It's not going to work. You know what I mean? Jail or dead before you even reach your, your stardom. So, I mean, even if you look at the top rappers right now. They're having hard times, even though they are present NBA young boy fighting cases left and right, man. He ain't living a great life. <laughs> he's one of the top richest rappers, but he's over here living this reckless ass lifestyle, trying to prove to everybody that uh, he he's hard as fuck. Is that what rap's about? Rap's about proving how hard you are to somebody? Nah, man. Rap's about the culture. It's about making a good song for so people remember. People don't remember dead songs like that, G. People remember good songs. People keep playing good. People are not going to keep playing dead songs. People are going to keep playing good songs that last forever. That's what Jeezy showed you last night. I don't have to make no diss songs. He, he didn't even have that many diss songs. He didn't even, I don't think he played one diss song towards Gucci and still won. Gucci had a whole list full of diss songs. Diss song after diss song. Disrespectful song after disrespectful song. Trying to, trying to sit here and break his spirit, but he couldn't even break his spirit, man. Because at the end of the day, no one even remember those songs. The truth. Nobody rides around playing the truth. Nobody gives a fuck. But a nigga ride around playing some Jeezy, go crazy. <laughs> so, you know, Jeezy won that won it by a landslide. You know, I mean I feel like I feel like he won it by the landslide because his songs were sound the production sounded much better, the song sounded much more clearer. I mean the the songs had more substance to it. And, and, like, the songs were just knocking more. He didn't even pull out all the songs out the bag, man. He didn't even pull out R.I.P. Like, he could have did R.I.P. R.I.P. was still killing half the songs Gucci did. A lot of Gucci songs that Gucci uh, played were, like, underground songs, Atlanta songs. Like, nobody knew nothing about that. Unless you were a true blue Gucci fan, you didn't know nothing about those songs. You sitting around like, what the hell is this nigga rapping? So, like... You know, to me, Gucci won, and I, and I'm glad. I'm glad that it was it was epic because these two never, uh, never performed so icy ever in their life. Never, they were funking immediately after their song. They was already funking, so they never performed a song in twenty and fifteen plus years. They never performed that song together. That's crazy. That's how long that they don't like. They never performed that song together. So for them to perform that song together was an epic time in hip hop, and it's a good time. It, it, it's it's one of the better days that I can remember in 2020. 